Hey guys, in this video, I'd just like to go through what I did in my first ever uh, practice session. So pretty much the first time I picked up my violin, I want to show you exactly what I did as a week one newbie. So let's check it out right after this. Okay guys, before we kick off, um, just hit the subscribe button and the bell button and uh, that'll let you know then when I release my next video and you'll be able to catch up on what's going on. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> hey guys, just really quick, um, I just noticed uh, while I was editing this video that uh, the camera is pulsing, so you'll see it at the so in the footage coming up, you'll see that the photos in the background, that they, um, they pulse. They do this thing where the, the camera zoom is just pulsing in and out. Now, in my sort of rush to film, I um, grabbed my girlfriend's new work phone, which is a Samsung A3, and I just plugged in my, you know, my mic and just went for it. And I never set the uh, the focus. I never turned off the autofocus. So every time I move, it keeps focusing on my violin and then back to me. So I'm really sorry that this is happening, but I promise I'll make sure that uh, I fix this for next video. So hopefully you can deal with it. But yeah, keep watching. Okay, thanks. Bye. So the first thing I did after I received my violin was I took it out of the took it out of the box and all the strings were loose. So the first thing I did is I tuned all my strings. Okay, and that took me about an hour. And I also snapped my A string as well. So I actually, and I'll cut now so you can have a look, but I actually played for a week without any strings because I was so broke that I couldn't even afford to buy a set of strings. Okay, the next thing I did is I took my shoulder rest and I learned how to put it on my violin because I didn't know I didn't know which way it was meant to go. So, for me, from what I've learned, I hope I got it right, is having the curve facing the, f the scroll of the violin seems to be the most comfortable way for me to wear this. Now it's only a cheap one and I hope very soon to invest in a better one. But I just seem to be able to rest my chin much easier with it facing this way. So to me, this is the correct way to put your uh, shoulder rest on. Okay, next. The next thing I did is I practiced putting my violin into my shoulder like this. So. I tried a both a classical way of placing it into my shoulder and I tried a more bluegrass fiddle way and I pretty much found the most comfortable way to wear your violin is the classical style. Everyone's different, fiddlers will have a different opinion on that and of course classical violin violinists will agree with me that this is the most comfortable way to wear your violin. <coughs> the next thing I uh, worked on is just learning to be able to hold my violin with my left hand. So when my violin sits in my chin, it's just being able to hold my violin. And then I would take it out and do it again. Take it out and I'd do it again. Okay, once, I, once it feels natural, rather than you're trying to bring your shoulder up to hold your violin or your, your hands a little tense, once you know that you're quite relaxed, I then took my bow. I took my bow out of my case. <coughs> I took my bow out of my case and the first thing I did was I gave it a, let me just undo it. So it looked like this, very, very flimsy. I just tightened it just enough so that 
The bow hairs are nice and tight, but there was a curve on my bow. Again, everyone does things differently. And the first thing I did is I took my rosin, I started rubbing it on there. And I realized that nothing was happening. So no rosin was going from this onto my bow. And the reason for that is when you, when you first receive your rosin, it has a nice shiny coat on it and it's pretty much slippery so it has no friction. So what I did is I took some sandpaper, so any kind of sandpaper you can find, okay, and I just gave it a rub. Until it turned white, like that. Then, then I was able to take this, and I went up and down, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight to 10 times. And what you will find is the ho horse hairs, who am I kidding? The synthetic hairs on here will go from like a, a dull yellow color and they'll start to take on like a white color. And you know then that you have rosin on your bow if that's starting to turn white. When it's brand new as well, you'll be able to see where you miss because there'll be like a dull yellow at the top and the bottom of your bow and the rest of it will have like a white sheen to it. Okay, once I did that, the next thing I did, <coughs> actually I don't need my bow, I don't need my violin for this. Now the next thing I did in my lesson is I learned how to hold my bow. Okay, so again, I'm a fiddler, so you know, I probably shouldn't even be showing you how to hold a bow, and I won't. I won't show you how I did it. So next thing I did is I went and learned how to hold a bow. If you want to learn how to hold a bow, go and look at Alison, the online piano and violin tutor, and she will teach you how to do that. You can find her here on YouTube. You can even click away now. Don't click away now. Okay, so the first thing I did then is I started practicing my bow hold. And it doesn't matter if you're a fiddler or a violinist, the most important part is making sure that you are holding your, viol your, your bow with the top of your thumb, like that, okay? It doesn't matter if you're a violinist and you're holding it down here, or if you're like a stumpy armed, stumpy fingered fiddler like myself and you hold it just a little bit higher, the thumb always goes in into the bow. So you don't, you don't have banana thumb, no banana thumb. Okay, nice thumb like that. And so this is what I practice. I practice trying to hold it like this. I'd sit there and just look at it. It was freaking boring. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess as you mentioned, the first time I got my violin, I pretty much played for like three hours straight. <clears throat> practice I didn't play anything so next thing I did is I just pretty much just played strings I just played strings hey guys just in case you're wondering what that noise is the the doom, doom, doom. Well, I have a pet rabbit, so I'm just gonna give you a quick look at her. Yeah, so she just kind of does what she wants. Hello, to the people. Say hello, to the people. Hello. And that's pretty much all I did for three hours. Well, that's not true. I did add a couple. I think I learned. I just played really. I just literally just played. I just played the, that. I pretty much played on the G and the A, uh, oops, the G and the D string. They were the only strings I played. And I just tried to play a scale. Now, 
<clears throat> a lot of people will recommend not to do that. A lot of people will say in your first time, just to practice holding your violin, practice holding your, uh, your bow. But honestly, if you're an, an adult, you know, beginner violinist, and you're learning online, you're not gonna spend two hours doing this. You're just not. So, you know, don't be afraid to have a play around. Sometimes the best way to learn an instrument really is to just break the rules and just go for it. You're gonna find that you're gonna bow all over the place at first, but the more you actually bow, and the more that you focus on bowing properly, the better you're gonna get. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you really quickly what I did <clears throat> the first time, just as quickly as I can. So, I picked up my violin. I practiced my hold. Okay, practice it one more time. Okay, once I did that, I got my bow, and then I practiced bowing. Just trying to get it right. Okay, once I've done that, <clears throat> I pretty much put it onto my violin. Okay, so as you can hear, there's people in the rooms that don't stress too much. So, there's people in the room, but don't worry about it. Okay, so once I did that, I just decided to just start playing. did that and I did that for about three hours and then I think I tried to learn a song like Amazing Grace. Can't remember how to play Amazing Grace. Sorry. Okay so at the moment I've been watching the TV show uh, Outlander. So I've just been practicing uh, how to play the theme song to it, which is actually a Scottish bagpipe song and it's called uh, Over the Sea to Sky or also known as the Sky Boat Song and it's on like <clears throat> Here, let me just do a sort of quick warm-up Yeah, so that's what I've been practicing at the moment, and <clears throat> hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll uh, I'll actually re re release it as a video. But I'm still really struggling with those uh, with those chords with the double stops. 
Here, I just can't nail it. Yeah guys, so <clears throat> that's me, um, just hit the subscribe button and the bell button and uh, that'll let you know when I uh, release videos, it'll come up in your feed. Yeah, uh, check out my website, thenewfiddler.com, just for uh, tips and hints, tips and hints, tips and hints, ah, I can't say that, tips and hints on, you know, if you want to start playing the fiddle or the violin, I mean really there's almost no difference at the beginning. So yeah, see you later.